I guess this has to be one of the strangest things I've ever taken a ride in. Nobody seems to be in charge. Is this driving itself now? It's driving itself now. You can see the steering wheel turning. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How does it know where to go? I designated the goal point about uh, 100 meters away. The goal point that Marshall has chosen cannot be reached directly. There are obstacles in the way. Using pictures from a set of TV cameras, the onboard system generates height and position information for the terrain ahead, decides which features are too big to be ignored, and then plots a course around them. This is one of a long series of experiments to develop autonomous vehicles, vehicles that can get around on their own. The work has been continuing for more than a decade at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, directed by Chuck Thorpe. How did everything change when you went to this next model? What, what's... Okay, we, we, when we were working on this one, we were thinking a lot about driving in hazardous environments, and our picture of hazardous environments was really military environments. But we started to realize that the highways are pretty hazardous environments, too. We still kill 40,000 people per year in the U.S. on the highways. This is their fifth generation of autonomous vehicles. It uses a simple personal computer hooked into a radar rangefinder for detecting obstacles and a single miniature TV camera. Dean Pomerlo, who wrote most of the software that ties it all together, took me out for a spin. What's this big blue square here? So that's actually a representation of the back of the vehicle. Um, you can see the, the vehicle and the two tires below it, yeah. the little gray squares. And then below that, the two yellow markings that are dancing back and forth. Yeah. Those represent the, uh, where it believes the edges of the lane to be. Because we're on a, in a parking lot right now, you don't actually, it's not finding any road, so those are sort of dancing around as it's hunting for the, uh, for the road ahead. Now, how about this red trapezoid? Yeah. <laughs> the trapezoid, yes. I knew there was a word for it. That's the portion of the scene ahead that the uh, system is actually processing. So it isn't processing the whole image. For computer vision systems, the real world is a mess. It's cluttered and complicated. So this system tries to make it simpler. It takes just the central part of the picture showing the road and looks for some kind of structure. Right now, it's finding this series of intersections just as confusing as the parking lot. But then it settles down. So right now, we're in a fairly well-structured setting. There are lane boundaries on the side and a dash marking down the middle. So the system is, is quite confident and, as you can see from the display, has locked on quite well to the lane center and the two uh, lane boundaries. So you would feel confident here letting the car go by itself? For that stretch, yes, but here we come up to a uh, to an intersection, there's a stoplight. In fact, yeah. this stoplight appears not to be working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that guy giving me hand signals that it's safe to go through the intersection is, is far beyond the kinds of stuff that uh, any machine vision system is capable yeah. of now. Even so, the system is not entirely dumb. The most interesting thing about the system is it, in fact, is not explicitly tracking those lane markings. There isn't a hand-programmed lane marker detector in here. The system basically adapts to utilize uh, whatever features are visible on the road ahead. What other features would it, would it track? Uh, things like what we see here, like the, uh, the s cracks in the road where they've been filled, uh -huh. the, the dark discolorations, even the, uh, the slight discoloration down the lane center. The system works best in the simpler setting of the highway. That's where I'm going to try it out in what they call warning mode. This is probably the way smart cars like this will first come into widespread use. Now, I'm going to deliberately drift here. I'm going to drift that way. Yep. See what happens. Right as your tire crossed the lane boundary, yeah. it basically gave, gave you the audible warning that uh, there's, there's something wrong here. You want to steer back towards the lane center. All right, here I go again. Drifting. 
the goal of this initially is to uh, basically deploy it on, on trucks. They're the where a large problem is with, with drowsy drivers in particular. Uh -huh. We're getting down to one lane, and there's no stripe on the left, mm -hmm. but so it must just be reading the, the oil spots in the center. The oil spots, and there is a slight <laughs> seam, a crack in the road. Oh, right, yeah. The system yeah. is also seeing, so yeah. it will adapt what features it, it utilizes to the, the circumstances. Now we're going to go to full autonomous steering. Better to have Dean in the hot seat. Nervous? A little bit, <laughs> yes, just a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is change the mode now into uh, the mode where we can automatically drive right, the vehicle. Right. How many times have you done this? Hundreds, done this a lot? Hundreds. Hundreds, well, hundred, hundred times. Oh, minimum. We rejoin the high-speed traffic on the highway. So we can see the system has locked on to the road ahead. Yeah. And so uh, I will now hit the red button. And now it's uh, steering on its own. How fast are we going? Uh, 55, 57 miles per hour. Well, this is not nearly as frightening as I thought it would be. <laughs> I'll tell you what's more amazing is we've been chatting about this, and I've completely forgotten that you have your hands <laughs> off the wheel. I can't get over that. Yeah, it's going around a curve now. It's great to see that wheel actually take the curve. Yeah. It's still up to the driver to apply the brakes, but in the future, the system will be able to handle that, too. Okay, now look, this car just pulled into our lane. Did we respond in any way to that? The radar has located it. You can see the uh, white uh, line with the pink dot right yeah. in the middle of it. Yeah. That's indicating it's tracking it and it knows it's in our lane. At the same time, the system excludes the overtaking car from the red trapezoid, so the view of the lane ahead is not disrupted. Ten years ago, our cameras recorded some of Chuck Thorpe's early experiments. The first nav lab, as they called it, detected obstacles with a laser scanner. It worked as well as the radar on the latest version, but it was slow, like everything on nav lab one. Just like today's system, it combined obstacle detection with processed TV camera pictures. But its computers took 10 seconds to process each new frame of picture. So it found the road and stayed on it, but at less than walking pace. Today, the speed limit's no longer in the computers. It's in the law. There's not much doubt that we'll be riding in robotic cars before long. But is that really such a strange idea? How much are we controlled by computers now that we just accept without, without giving it too much thought? The interesting thing is that, that probably 15, even 10 years ago, the view of robotics was you'd have a, a human appearing servant in your house, for example, that would uh, you know, clean your dishes, make your bed in the morning. Um, what's really happened in robotics is the technology has become embedded and, and really invisible. So there are a lot of things. Your, your um, microwave oven has a pretty sophisticated uh, computer in it. So robotics is actually becoming less and less visible, but more and more prevalent through society. And that's what we see for this technology. Um, this camera, um, just a few years ago, was a, a camera about this big and needed a big platform to sit on. But it's shrinking down, and eventually we hope to put everything in a, in a box smaller than that um, and, and just stick it on the back of the rearview mirror, and the person won't even realize it's there until they begin to drift off the road and it, and it warns them and, and hopefully saves their life.